What up, YouTube? Thanks for stopping in the tavern today. We are going to be doing a, a recorded, uh, just about to jump into a mock draft right now. Been doing a lot of Dynasty stuff, so now we are going to hop into some redraft and going to run as many of these back-to-back -back as I can. Today, uh, lobby's full. We're going to do a one-quarterback PPR, uh, three-wide receiver, two-flex, getting into the redraft spirit. Got a lobby full. They want to get it done, so let's go ahead and start this draft. Everyone for uh for stopping in today if you haven't already hit the sub button uh if it's not a big deal and your end takes a couple seconds it is a huge deal for me so if you want to check out a few more of my videos or just give me a little support for kind of still being on the startup uh definitely definitely hit that subscribe button and uh you know if you want hit the bell get reminded when i put up uh, some new videos new mock drafts uh new, new player breakdowns doing a lot of dynasty content with uh some friends of mine I'll be getting into the uh oh come on dude it looks like the uh, auto draft hold on well Mike's on auto it's okay we're gonna we're gonna run with it Mike you're gonna come back if you're gonna auto pick auto picking CD lamb is uh is not the worst so let's see I've been doing a lot of mock drafts recently I mean I've been doing decent mocks but I've been doing so many dynasty mocks of various different sizes and settings that I haven't really done as much redraft as I want to. So this should be kind of exciting. I already see McCaffrey's fall into the 103, which it's interesting. I mean, the full wide receivers before running back seems to have really taken hold. I know it's been that way in the dynasty community a little bit longer than redraft. We'll, we'll kind of see. I'm a little unsure. I think this is one of the things I might. Uh, Let's go! Let's go! Full, full. Oh, you know, we got two auto drafts. Oh, no. Eh, we'll make it work. Brees Hall coming off the 104. I wonder that's uh that's interesting going going Brees before Bijan in terms of I know it was an auto pick, but kind of interesting. JJ going off the board. Um so this is kind of interesting. Uh Tyreek Bijan. I have been preferring to go a hero RB build so far and i think i'm gonna stick to it even though tyreek might just be a bet you know tyreek's the better pick so let's go for it i do have tyreek ahead in the rankings we'll test it out we'll see how it goes again the more the more mock drafts i've done in the dynasty setting the more i like just going really solidly hero rb and then so i can take a lot of wide receivers later on we'll see in a lot of these mocks they're gonna go back and forth i do think that in many cases, I, I think the better pick is Tyreek, but I think the safer way for how I want to draft and the running backs that I actually want to attack, I actually think I might end up going Bijan. I think that the fall in quality from Tyreek to what I'm going to get at the next pick isn't actually as crazy because I think it's a pretty large tier of like, like the second and third tiers of wide receiver, I think are really good and there's not as, as big of a drop off. I think there is a big drop off at running back. But I've been so inundated with dynasty content lately that kind of forgetting that, you know, these aging veteran RBs, when I say aging veterans, I mean, 27 seems old for me. So guys that I hate drafting in dynasty startups I kind of have to start switching the thinking a little bit because guys like Saquon Barkley, for instance, I think are going to be smash picks this year. Jonathan Taylor, I don't think is being valued enough in a redraft for the season i think he's gonna have so we'll see you know for instance kyron is not someone i'm super psyched about in dynasty is he a guy I could, you know what i would just take a chan above him straight up though which is what's kind of interesting and i think it's actually probably what i'm gonna do here really interesting i mean the chalky play so it's interesting would i rather have Bijan? and Devonte adams or tyree kill and devin h and that's really interesting i'm just kind of rising in h and i think Devonte adams might even be the better pick here but i do like having some shares of bowers um if i take Devonte, that's kind of off the table a Devonte, i'm starting to fade just a little bit i still like him as like a super super safe wide receiver one who's going to get the volume I don't think their defense is great. They're just, I don't think their offense is just projected. It's it, Devontae is going to have to be the best piece on a kind of a bad offense for him to, to pay off this year. I have some hesitations, but he's just so 
ridiculously talented. It might be a mistake. But I'm steamed up on HN. Happy to get him. A little bit of a reach. Never feels great reaching, so we'll see. Waddle, Jacobs, Henry. So that's uh, that's Mike on auto draft there. I mean, auto draft's not going to kill us. Have a couple guys autoing here. Kelsey going off the board at as the tight end one. Interesting. No QBs off the board yet. Wouldn't have expected him off the board quite yet, but do you think Allen typically goes in the third and then hurts in the fourth? What are we thinking about picking here? So we did the Tyreek Hill, Devin A. Chain, all Miami. Let's go thing. It's also kind of weird going Tyreek Hill, Devin A. Chain, but I also mm -hmm. think I do actually like the Miami offense quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure. In, re in redraft, I don't think I'd stack with two of those. It's just too many people for a bye week. So what do we do here? Um, I don't know if I want to go with the Josh Allen. I like too many late quarterbacks too early for Rashad White. Diggs is interesting. Trey McBride certainly too early. These wide receivers are a little bit rough. Seems a little bit early for neighbors. Stefan Diggs looks pretty interesting. We're going to go DJ Moore though. Really, I almost just took Allen because I didn't like a lot of their players. I was actually between DJ Moore, Debo Samuel, and then honestly, I was considering Malik Neighbors, believe it or not. I think he's going to be fantastic. Classic Mike got his guy. You know, he's super happy about getting James Cook there. I, and I love me some James Cook, too. Yeah, Allen, for me, it's like he's a good pick there. My challenge is this year in particular, the quarterbacks that I can get basically completely free, I kind of like. Um, there's this big ranking of, you know, QB 10 through like 14 that I'm just so fine with any of them that I just kind of want to wait on QB again this year. So I, I just I can't see myself taking any third round quarterbacks of any kind. I like some of the I like the value guys in the fifth, maybe as early as the four or five turn, but probably not in the fourth. Uh, like if I can get Mahomes or Anthony Richardson in the fifth, I'm very happy. I'm targeting both of those guys pretty heavily. Uh, those are probably my the two guys that I'm reaching for. After that, I just don't see a huge amount of difference between a lot of the middling uh, QBs. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I like Kyler Murray. I'm not super super high on him, so. I don't know. That's just uh, just my take through the what I think about quarterbacks right now. I'm tending to go a little bit more later quarterback. A little bit, not not much, but a little bit. We'll see as we get into our our. We're, we're doing some. Uh, I'm going to put out a couple of redraft analysis videos where I go through some of these more interesting drafts, going through mostly my lineup and just kind of picking apart what we do differently. Um, and trying to be a little bit smarter so that, you know, in a, in a week or two, we're really, really mocking it at a level we feel super confident in. Uh, so Jalen Hurts is definitely in consideration coming back to me in the fourth. This would be a little bit of a fall for him. And if I'm going to take an early quarterback, he'd, he'd be the guy I'd take in the fourth here. Um, that being said, there are some other positions I like quite a bit. And Jalen Hurts versus what I could see coming back around with Anthony Richardson. And I do like Richardson almost straight up. I have him like neck and neck with Jalen Hurts. It'd be tough. It'd be a tough sell to take him here. Uh, I do like a lot of the wide receivers here. So let's just go ahead and take a guy I'm pretty high on this year. Taking Devonta Smith over Stephon Diggs is kind of interesting. I just really like what Devonta Smith could do this year. I actually think, I mean, I like AJ Brown, but I thought last year him and Devonta Smith would be much closer than they are. There was a lot of considerations for me to take Cooper cup here, actually. Um, but we'll have to see. I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest. I'm a little less, uh, I've been doing so much dynasty that the actual, uh, redraft ADP is kind of catching me a little bit out. So I don't think this is going to be one of my best drafts, a draft I feel really, really good with. Uh, but we'll, We'll see. I think the next two rounds will probably tell it off for me. So Devonta Smith was interesting. I'm just, I'm not really big on digs and that. I mean, he should be good. I just don't think he's going to be great in an offense that has so many weapons. He's going to have too many days where I'm just not loving it. I'd probably take cup over him, honestly. Um, 
but I like Devonta Smith and that the targets are extremely condensed, highly predictable. What a value hurts at the four twelve has to feel absolutely amazing <laughs> auto drafted, but still, I mean, his auto draft team is going pretty well so far. And this is, you know, this is pretty crazy to me that, uh, so like, so I'm saying round five, we still have, you know, this is where I like a lot of these quarterbacks. This is where I take Richardson because he's definitely not making it back to me. So obviously we're off of the, the, uh, the early tight ends. Um, I also kind of like a little bit later tight end this year. So if I like late tight end and late quarterback, it looks like a lot of my teams are going to have pretty big benches. So the question is how, when do I start taking bench running backs and wide receivers over them? I don't know. I can fit tight end in a lot of places. It's just once it, once it gets past, you know, Kelsey Laporta Pitts is not the same for me, but Kincaid McBride and Andrews Pitts is definitely last in that, in that order for me. Once it gets past that, I'm yeah, I'm pretty chill. I, I don't think I need to reach too, too far up. There's just so many guys I like late. I, I think Cole commits really fine late. Uh, I like TJ Hawkinson in the dark throw later knowing TJ is going to be fine in a good offense later on. Bowers goes a little bit later than I think he should. Ferguson goes a little later than I think he should in that offense. Ferguson might be my favorite target. Um, but Ferguson, Komet, Schultz, Fryermuth, I'm all really happy with those guys. More happy with Fryermuth in particular. I think he can be a pretty big, consistent target with some upside in that offense. But again, it's just a big range of guys you can get later on. They're not going to win you anything. Hopefully, my overall player takes that wide receiver and running back. This being a, a, <clears throat> a double flex, three wide receiver double flex mock that we're doing. I really want my positional. I, I want to win on my positional players. So let's see where the rest of the board's going. Sorry, I'm not doing much, uh, much analysis of where the board is going. Um, McBride's typically going before Kincaid. I think it's really interesting that Pitts goes before um, Andrews. I, I mean, a uh, classic, I'll have to find his take on Pitts over Andrews here. Cause I kind of have Andrews in redraft, not, not dynasty, but in redraft, I'm really liking Andrews. He's he's kind of my like the tight end two or three. He's way up there for me. Um, so it's kind of a spicy take on, on pitch there. Very interested. Move around. Kenneth Walker seems a little bit underrated. He's been slipping far past. He's kind of going after Pacheco, Cook, and White. I don't necessarily think that's in redraft. Yeah, I do think Pacheco should go after Pacheco, but Cook and White, I think Walker should be a little bit closer. Camaro went. Kind of early. Love the Pickens pick here. Uh, Dell over Higgins and some of these aging guys. I like that a lot. I like Rome. Rome is kind of a pick where I think you could really hit the jackpot if he has a better season than people are expecting. I think there's there's something there. Uh, let's see. We do need some help at running back. We do need to take one at some point here because uh, we're going to start running out of players that we like. David Montgomery is pretty interesting here. I'm obviously a fan of his. I think he's fallen in ADP because of what? Gibbs is going to do, but I think he's just a super stabilizing force getting him here in the dead zone where we know he's talented. He's going to be in a great offense. He could easily score 10 more touchdowns. He missed a couple of games and still had 10 touchdowns. Monty is the type of guy that I like uh, to stabilize sort of a hero RB build where I don't have to go nuts on running back. Monty's probably not winning me a year, but at the same time, I, I like him a lot. Um, there are some running backs that I like a little bit more than him. And I think there's some running backs I can get late. So I didn't need to take him there. If I'm being honest, they're still, I just didn't feel like taking George Kittle. It seemed a little bit early to go for like a Kittle or Bowers. I'd really like to take them next round. And I'd be, so I could flip flop. That's not crazy. Jordan Addison. I'm pretty big on this year as well. I think he makes a pretty major leap. Um, I like this range a lot, which is kind of interesting. So in the chat, we're talking about uh, thoughts on Kamara this year. Uh, I, I like Kamara this year. I don't like him at the 5-2. I think his range of outcomes is pretty wide. Um, I just don't think I'd take him that early. That being said, I I wouldn't be surprised if he was a quote-unquote like light-end league winner. If he has still Montrist volume plus all that pass-catching work he's used to, 
and maybe we're getting carried away with uh, him passing the torch. Maybe we're one year too soon on it. And if that's the case, he could still be a top five tight end or say a top five uh, running back just because of the pass catching. Now it's more doubtful just because right now the top five is kind of tough to crack. Um, so kind of kind of is what it is there. I don't know. I got to think about the Kamara pick a little bit more. I've been fading him a little bit. I was big on him last year, not as big this year. So some quarterbacks go. That feels good. Kittle goes off. Uh, I kind of like some Bowers here. Thinking about Bowers, thinking about Jordan Addison. There's still so many good tight ends. Great. I don't think I should get caught up. I'm just thinking I'm going to take Addison here probably. There's still some upside wide receivers outside of Addison I like, so maybe that was a little bit early for a guy that won't be wide receiver one. Maybe Hollywood has a little bit more of a shot, but he won't be one over Kelsey. Ladd could be a, a slightly more upsidey pick. Brian Thomas and Keon Coleman, we love them in Dynasty, but I, I think they're going to be late season bloomers. I wouldn't mind getting my hands on one. Still some great RBs on the board. I'm just going to fade tight end a little bit. It's one of those I like the tight ends on the board, but I like so many more of them. So I'm just going to te- keep taking value where it is. If we're looking at the roster here, we still technically have one more flex to fill for our starters before we want to draft the tight end. If we're all going, you know, if we're going filling out our, our roster before bench spots. And honestly, with the way we're drafting, where we're drafting skill positions at a premium. Yeah, I think I think we'll probably do that. Like, I want to co- what I try to do is I want to coincide like. I'm totally fine taking a, a, a bench player over, say, a starting tight end or a quarterback. If I'm going late at those, I think that's perfectly fair. But if you can get the two to a line where maybe the tight ends, the last position I have. And it looks like I'm potentially filling it in a range where I'm pretty happy with the tight ends. I could wait another round potentially. So maybe I take, I'm planning on taking one or two more players before tight end, but let's see how the board fall. Um, Najee went before Zach Moss and Zamir white. I think it's interesting. I think uh, Zach Moss, I think is actually being underrated in Cincy. Even if it's sort of a timeshare, I just think the offense should be really good. And he was, great last year i mean i don't think he's going to be a world beater but we might be down on him in dynasty but i think it's bleeding a little bit over too much and the dead zone running backs have they've burned us a little bit so i can see the hesitation but i think he's falling a little bit too far nice value and love back on the clock here um yeah this i mean this probably is that the place to take bowers i don't think he's going to have the crazy breakout that say you know, McBride had this past year or as a rookie Laporta. But that being said, there's still a shot that he could be pretty high up there. Um, I, I like him. I just I like him as a weapon. I think they're going to use him as a weapon in the offense. Um, like it's two flex league. So, you know, if I end up having to draft another tight end just in case, oh, well, I, I'm fine taking a shot on Bowers, particularly because Ferguson already went. Don't get me wrong. I could I could wait. Joku's probably a more He's going to score more points. I love Brooks, too. I was seriously thinking about taking Brooks there. Kind of wanted to. In retrospect, I probably I would rather have Brooks. I like the upside. I, I really want to believe in Bowers, but I can definitely get tight ends better. So we already made mistake number one, which is tight ends are just infinite um, in redraft. Once once you pass like the fifth round, you just, the fifth or sixth round, there's just all these guys that are pretty close. Didn't need to reach when it uh, looks like a little bit of a tear break with Brooks, but we'll see. Still plenty of running backs that we like here. Um, I think Eckler is very, very serviceable. Uh, I like Tajay Spears a lot. Trey Benson is a guy I'm kind of interested in at this point, like in Chase Brown and Jerome Ford. Yeah, I think I like all of those guys. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to need to draft a couple more running backs here before it really gets thinned out. I mean, honestly, Devin Singletary might be perfectly fine there. So let's see what we get. Uh, looking at the board a little bit. 
Brooks wasn't worried about Chubb. Jalen Warren's nice pick there. Eckler went off the board. So, yeah, the Bowers pick was just kind of messy. He probably would have gone off. We could have taken him later and been just fine. Oh, like, I don't think that's so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's like thinking David and Joku around later. If I can get. If you're telling me Bowers at the 8 7 or like in the 12th round, I can probably get Fryermuth. You probably just go in the 12th round. So that's maybe a little bit of a mistake. Uh, here. Yeah, we're, we're actually seriously considering Javante. I know everyone's down on him, but I think we're just going to take him here as. Well, everyone's down on him, so maybe he's fine. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott went before him, which seems a little bit crazy. Nick Chubb went before him, seems a little bit silly. Javante, I I, I don't think he's going to be crazy. I just don't think he has to be ridiculously bad. The reports coming out of camp are obviously from the beat people, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he's not the same guy anymore, but last time I checked, he's been removed from the injury for longer now. I never, I was never huge on Javante. I just, I'm not buying the dip as much. I, I'm still fading him in a lot of formats, but at this particular time, it was between him or Trey Benson. Maybe Benson was slightly better, but I think Javante's better this year. Singletary might have been the pick, which is feels a little bit gross, but might be correct. See, that's what I'm saying. Like these quarter, the level of quarterback that you can get, I can get Brock Purdy in the tenth or Richardson the fifth. It's like I need Richardson to be everything I need him to be. Otherwise, I would love this year to be able to take Purdy in the 10th to, I mean, Jaden Daniels is still on the board and he could be fantastic. So the more drafts I do, the more I'm kind of feeling I want to go late with a lot of these situations. Um, okay, we're going to need to draft two tight ends in case that's not a big thing. We do need some more running backs. What are we looking at at the positions here? Running backs are drying up really, really quickly. I kind of like just locking in some upside with Chase Brown or Jack, Jack Sharp. And I'm going to go with Chase Brown. He's been kind of a flag plant for me this year. So I'm going to take a few more shares of him. So let's see. what what What's our roster looking like? We're a little thin. I mean, Javante is our first backup and then Chase Brown from there. So we're not feeling great at running back. We probably need to take a few more dart throws. Tyreek, DJ, Devonta, feeling pretty good about that. I don't even want Javante in my flex realistically, so I could upgrade that. I need to grab a few more wide receivers now that I have that. Hawkinson going a little bit late. I like Jaden Daniels as well. I probably want to scoop him up. Just for a little bit of upside. Well, I mean, I already actually I don't need that. I mean, I have a, a rich. I'm gonna ride until I die on that one. Come on. So what could we be looking for here? Uh at running back, we could be looking at well, Jalen Wright handcuff, maybe. If that's a thing. Uh, I could see. I like me some Ty Chandler. I like me some Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, I could back up Javante with a little bit of Jilly. I do think I'm going to take at least one handcuff this year. We could definitely take like a Tyrone Tracy, Roshan Johnson. I like those as not necessarily handcuffs because. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably get that. I don't know if I want to take Jalen Wright because I don't think he's actually the handcuff and redraft. He, and he's more of a dynasty play. I don't, I don't think he sees the field that much this year. Not in a meaningful, like, can count on him every game sort of way. I mean, if H-Chain goes down, I'm just screwed, so. So, so far, we've got Tyreek Hill. We grabbed H-Chain on the way back. Have to do a little thought exercise between should I have taken Bijan early. Feels like I reached a little bit at some of the other zone. We're back on the clock. Happens quick. Um... I can always take an even later time at this point, given that we kind of went a little bit early on Bowers. I don't need to grab the crazy Jade and hype. I think right here, I just need to lock in some running backs that I like beforehand. They're going to stay there for a while, though. So, all right, we'll start taking a couple 
I, what? I mean, I just ran out of time there on taking Judy. Honestly, I don't know if that was a great pick. That feels pretty gross. I'd rather take some upside shots, and that was pretty gross. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to run so many mock drafts. I, I know 30 second pick clock changes things. It definitely makes you make a few more mistakes, but I like that it forces you into tough situations. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on some cues a little bit. So, guys, I still definitely believe in this year that could do some big things. We're looking for upside here. So, yeah, Palmer has upside. Dotson has some upside. Shoot, huge has some upside. Wix. That's what I'm looking at. You know, pop. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, a little Wandale, I think, could be pretty spicy. I like that a lot. Give Mims a shot there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for there. Upside here. So our running back room right now is Devon HN, David Montgomery and then Javante and Chase Brown. I would want at least one more. I want a Ty Chandler or a Jaleel McLaughlin, and then one of Tyrone or Roshan as like my upside pick there. Probably just going to kind of go based on ADP right now. I do want one more tight end. Um, I think I'm going to take Cole here. I think everyone thinks he's a big loser, from all the offensive weapons added. Uh, I think he's fine. I, I I still think he's a red zone weapon. I think he's a good tight end, if not ridiculous. Um, but he's very stable. He's still pretty young. He's never done anything wrong. He's just always kind of underperformed because it's been an underperforming offense. And I'd like to think he could stand to benefit relatively substantially in a similar way that I kind of view Friar Muth, where he's looked at as less than he really is and what he could be because of previously stagnant offenses. So. We'll see. Taking a second tight end, though, after taking Bowers kind of early. It's like Bowers 8-7, and I'm seeing what I can get here later on. If I had skipped Bowers and just taken Brooks, then instead of taking Javante, I'm able to take def probably Christian Watson or A.D. Mitchell. Maybe, you know, AD Mitchell for the stack, but Christian Watson, I think, probably has better overall upside. So, if anything, I think this maybe convinced me a little bit that if I'm feeling iffy about Bowers earlier in the year and it's going to make me draft a second tight end potentially, then why am I taking him in the eighth? I think it's the what could be if he really truly breaks out. Don't. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna fix that in free in future drafts. So here, um, what do we do uh, before we completely get stepped out at running back? I think we are going to take Ty Chandler. Case of an Aaron Jones injury, that could be pretty fantastic. I like it's between him or it's just too soon for anybody else. We're gonna take him at ADP. And I guess we could technically be set at running back. I think premium, if we're going to go for one wide receiver, it's probably probably Jalen Polk and Pearsall to stash. I think Pearsall later in the year in case of a trade could be pretty big and Demario Douglas. I want to get one of those guys. I think all of them are pretty great, which means I probably should have taken them at the Chandler pick and then gotten whoever else do I like Ty Chandler tremendously more than Tyrone Tracy or Roshan Johnson? Yeah, maybe honestly. I, yeah, right. So I'm saying you can get Lawrence in the 13th pick. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure why I'm taking a quarterback in the fifth one. This is the, this is what you can get later on. These will be some fun mocks. I'm going to try some things. So, yeah, looking to get one, maybe two of our favorite wide receivers here. It's just this late. Typically, what I find is that the big upside is in running back, not wide receiver. That being said, I have four wide receivers that I like. A fifth that was just a complete 
whiff of a pick. I mean, I just like Judy because I thought he was undervalued. But um, okay, well, we're probably gonna get Tracy or Roshan back. We're probably not gonna get one of the other guys back. So let's go ahead and take. So this is between Wicks, and Wandale probably. I think Wandale's being like stupid slept on. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna take him. I know ADP says I should definitely be going Wicks, but my honest feelings are that I don't know. I've I've had a thing. I liked I liked Wandale as a prospect. I, I liked what he did in the field. I think he was consistent, even while he was he was one of their best wide receivers while he was battling through injury, and the healthier he got, the better he looked. I think he might actually end up being sort of the two. I could see that happening. Could be miles off. Maybe Wicks was just way better of a pick, but I think like it Wicks, my, my, my challenge with a guy like Wicks in redraft specifically is in, in a non-best ball format is most outcomes for him are he's just not startable he's you never know when it's going to be his day because there's so many other good weapons so and roshan goes yeah so so interesting this was really interesting about this a lot of people thinking alike i love braylon allen love tyrone tracy i mean all these sleep so we're all thinking about the same sleepers so adp straight up out the window in that case and now there really isn't I think Bucky Irving could be a decent. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, so future mocks. It's good to know later on all your all your 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 fun picks at RB are gonna go. Everyone's thinking of similar guys here. So this is probably a Mims for me. All right, so how'd this finish up? Well, let's pull up um, pull up our roster here. So this finished, we went Anthony Richardson at QB, Devin H. and David Montgomery at running back, wide receiver Tyree Kill, DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Brock Bowers at tight end, my mix a little Cole Komet off the bench, my flex I got Jordan Addison and Javante Williams. And from a bench, Chase Brown, Ty Chandler at running back, and then Jerry Judy, Wandale Robinson, Marvin Mims at wide receiver. Decent, not great, could have done better. I feel like there was a couple of mistakes, but uh, we we learned a few things. It's good times. Uh, all right, it's been fun. I'm going to go ahead and get another mock draft setup thanks for hanging out with us hope you uh enjoy the mock draft try to get a a little bit more reading the board and uh talking to you about how the board's going i was a little in my head on, on some of my own picks there hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed staying with me though and kind of talking through where you're at so interesting for me i know uh questions for you guys um Bijan over tyreek would you rather have tyreek kill devon h in or kyron if you prefer him or would you rather have Bijan robinson and Devonte adams that's a good question um, really got to get our rankings figured out wide receivers in the third and fourth rounds. That's going to be important. Um, Monty at six or just keep with the wide receiver value that we like and wait a little bit longer. Do we like Bowers in the eighth round or could we wait? These are questions I am uh, curious about. What are your favorite flyers? What would you have done different as we get into the Judy? I'm just going to go ahead and say it's a mistake. If you like it, let me know. But what do we want to do with this pick? And then 13, 14, and 15. What do we like there? What do we do different? Uh, let me know in chat. Uh, please give me a sub. Throw some stuff in the chat. Reach out to me on Sleeper. And uh, let's, uh, let's run some more mocks. It's been fun. I'm going to hop into another one with these guys, and we'll hit the record button again. Talk to you guys soon.